So now I give the floor back to Prime Minister Orban. Thank you very much to all of the speakers who've taken the floor. I would have been happy to talk to you about the program of our presidency, but I can see that you're not interested in that. There were a couple of political intifadas here. Now, all of these left-wing lies about Hungary, I think, is pure political propaganda. You are parliamentary members, and if you want to do that, then you can do so. But I was quite surprised at what I heard from the president of the commission, because there are undoubtedly differences of opinion between Hungary and the European Commission. That's clear, and I deliberately didn't raise these issues, given the fact that, as a presidency, we are working on Europe's behalf for Europe. I don't think it's right to talk about these differences of opinion when we're here discussing the Hungarian presidency. That's not right. And unfortunately, it wasn't like this before. A former president of the commission would never have said that. That would have never would have happened before. In the past, as the treaty says, the commission was the guardian of the treaties. It was a neutral body, and its job was to be the guardian of these treaties. It was to put political debates to one side and deal with differences in a legal manner. But this is now changed. Rather than being a guardian of the treaties, it's a political body, a political weapon. What you want to do is to patriots attack in Europe and people in the patriots of your party group. Now, I intentionally left out Hungary from my presentation. But if you want to speak about it, I'll talk about it. I fully reject what you said, President of the Commission. Any comparison with what freedom fighters did in 1956 was a mistake. And what happened in 1956 has nothing to do with what's going on in Ukraine. It's a complete mistake to make a comparison between those two things. But I would like to say something. There is already a statement in the Anglo-Saxon public discourse that everyone accepts, at least it seems so to me. The European representatives arguing in favor of the war do not accept it. As the Anglo-Saxon press writes, if we want to win, we must first have the courage to admit that we are losing. Because the truth is we are losing on the Ukrainian front, and you here act as if this is not the case. But the reality is, thanks to the President of the Commission as well, the European Union has a mistaken policy when it comes to this war. If we want to win, then we need to change this losing strategy that we are currently implementing. It was a poorly planned and poorly implemented strategy. If we continue on that route, we are going to lose. If we don't want Ukraine to lose, then we need to change strategy. 
And I think that you should consider that in every war. There needs to be diplomatic work. We need to have communication, direct and indirect contacts. If we don't do that, then we will go even deeper into war and the situation be even more desperate. More and more people will die. Hundreds of thousands of people have died. Thousands of people are dying while we're talking here and here now. And with this strategy, we won't find any solution in the battlefield. I think we need to stand up for peace. We need to focus on a ceasefire and create a different strategy because otherwise we will all lose. I don't think it's fair for the president of the commission to accuse Hungary that we allowed people smugglers. No, that's not true. It arrests people smugglers and after a period of time they are expelled from the country. And if they return, they have to stay in prison twice as long. We, we have saved Europe from more than 2,000 people smugglers. We should be recognized for that rather than criticize. Several people spoke about European unity, Mr. Weber as well. We believe in unity, in diversity. We are never going to accept that European unity means that you tell us what to do. We should keep quiet if we don't like something. That's not what European unity is. The people have to just keep quiet. If they do not agree with the majority or with the commission. In Hungary, in Parliament, the governing parties have a two-thirds majority, but we never would have seen that, what you did here today. We may have a two-thirds majority, but all parties in the opposition all received posts in committees that they deserve. But you stop the patriots from having those posts and then you want to lecture us about democracy. That's just incredible. Mr. Weber said that nobody talks to us. Well, that's an insult to those people who have spoken to us in the in preparing the they. I saw the German chancellor. I saw the French president in France, and I went to Rome as well. And it's unfortunate that the leader of the EPP is not telling the truth. He says that the Hungarian governing party did not win the European elections in Hungary. We got 45%. You got 30% in Germany. So who won? And you made personal comments, so I'd like to make some. You know, anger is not good. We know what the conflict is between us. In 2018, this is one of the key reasons why you couldn't be the head of the commission. I supported you and I promised that I would support you. But then you said that you do not want to become president of the commission with the votes of some Hungarians and you didn't become the president. And that's why you're angry with me. You want to be sitting there where Mr. von der Leyen is sitting, and because of me, you're not able to be there. And you're angry with me. But I can't do anything about that. I'm sorry that you've become a hungry phobic person. I can't do anything about that. And please do not focus on personal insults rather than on a debate about European issues. 
I'm an optimist, but I think that lack of knowledge is not a good place in a debate. Apparently, we have high taxes in Hungary. We have a 15% flat rate income tax, and we have the economic growth in Hungary is twice that of the average in the EU. And then you talk about, about the budget figures in Hungary. That's not important to you. I can see that the member from France from Renew does not like the Hungarian constitutional system. You have to accept that we have the right to our own constitution. You claim that we discriminate against certain groups in Hungary, based on their way of life, which simply does not reflect reality. The Hungarian constitution grants everyone the right to live according to their own worldview. However, there is one thing that the Hungarian constitution undoubtedly does. It defends families. The Hungarian constitutional defense protects marriage, children, and, and in our constitution, it says that marriage is between a man and a woman. Now, the accusations on corruption, I have to reject those. We could go in this debate where we exchange personal remarks, because I think this group has some expertise when it comes to corruption. Does this body really intend to lecture any member state on corruption? Are you serious? And one of the group leaders said huge numbers of people are leaving Hungary. That's simply not true. There is many people living Hungarians working abroad. It's a false perception and it's propaganda. Now, on EU money, I would just like to say that we all know that the money EU support comes to Hungary. 80% of that goes back to you. 80% goes back into the pockets of your companies. And then you want to criticize us because we accept EU funding. Is that logical? and the representatives from the left. Well, you're saying that we are against trade unions. Why? Now we come to agreements with trade unions. We, we have recently agreed on multi-annual wage increase program, and we will also come to more such agreements in the coming years. I didn't bring the word Nazi into this debate. You did. Anti-fascist was mentioned, but a German citizen who came to Hungary and in the street attacked people walking in that street and caused, of course, significant injuries because he didn't like how those people looked. That is what Nazism is. You can't attack people in the streets in Hungary for those reasons. And then they come to the European Parliament asking, get me out of prison. You allow someone out of prison because they attacked people on the streets and assaulted people. In Hungary, this is not possible. Don't ask me to release people who have committed common crimes from Hungarian prisons. The president of the commission talked about how many Russian people are working in Hungary. I think this is a case of hypocrisy in Hungary. There are 3,000 Russians working. We gave out 3,000 permits last year. Altogether, there were 7,000 working. What about Germany? What's the situation like there? There are 300,000 working in Germany, and they're from Russia. And then you accuse me? 
In Spain, there are 100,000 Russians working, and then you make an accusation against me. In France, 60,000 Russians working there, and then you criticize Hungary where we have 7,000. Is that fair? And on economic relations, Hungary trades in a transparent manner. But what about your countries? And see, there are many countries from where you come. Circumvent sanctions via Asia and trade with Russia. I'll give you some figures. Every month, the European Union exports $1 billion more to certain Central Asian countries more than before the Russia-Ukraine war. And why? Because this is how the sanctions are circumvented. German, French, and Spanish companies are avoiding sanctions by doing this. You also mentioned energy. You mentioned since the outbreak of the war, Western countries have bought Turkish and Indian oil to the tune of 8.5 billion euros. 8.5 billion euros. This is hypocrisy. In 2023, EU Western countries bought 44% more crude oil from Russia than before that. The tax revenue from these companies went into the Russian coffers. And then you accuse us of friendship with Russia. You are funding them. Truth is, I didn't come here to read out these facts to you. I had no intention to do that. I came here to present the program of the Hungarian presidency, and I would have liked to have said that there are problems. I would have liked to have said to the group leaders that there is competitiveness problems. Migration is a problem. We need to change. And the Hungarian presidency has some proposals and we'd like the parliament to support us in that. That's why I came here today. But then you have decided to turn it partisan political clash. And I think that's very unfortunate. If you attack us, I will defend my country. Thank you. All right, let's continue. So I give the floor next to Peter Magyar. Five minutes.